The U.S. Embassy in Kabul says a ban on private security companies in Afghanistan could affect development and aid work in that country. An embassy spokesperson says the ban could have, quote, unintended consequences, including a possible delay of U.S. reconstruction and development assistance efforts. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has ordered all private security firms to disband within four months. The ban has been welcomed by ordinary Afghans who see private security firms as operating with impunity. In January, two U.S. security guards were arrested on charges of murdering two Afghans and wounding another one in Kabul. To discuss this a little bit further, I'm going to bring in Mr. Uh, Chip Hitz, he is the president of the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, he is joining us uh, via satellite, as you can see, from Dallas and Texas. Mr. Pitts, as always, it's very good to have you with us. Washington is, uh, of course, linking the aid and development efforts in Afghanistan to the operation of its private security firms in, in that country. Now, the Afghan National Army is composed of almost 130,000 soldiers for the information of our viewers, while the fully armed and equipped security firms have almost 40,000 men at their disposal. It seems to be a point of contention for uh, the Afghan government. How do you see uh, this disagreement has uh, developed, Mr. Pitts? Well, this disagreement has actually been a long time coming, and as you mentioned, it is politically popular. Um, Amnesty International and others have condemned abuses by private military contractors both in Afghanistan and in Iraq and your viewers will recall that there were video images of debauchery of private contractors and so forth. So not only the president but even the parliament have previously called for uh, banning these private contractors. The problem is that NGOs and the Afghan elite, including Karzai's own staff and his forces, depend on these contractors. And so it's politically popular, especially with the elections coming up in just a few weeks on September 18th, but it's very impractical to think that they'll all be gone within four months. It's sort of a, an anti-foreigner thing, even though most of the employees of these contractors, over 90 percent, are Afghans. Uh, Mr. Pitts, it seems that the uh, new U.S. strategy to conduct military operations in, uh, uh, in population centers, especially like uh, Marja and Kandahar, or providing money to the U.S. commanders to buy loyalties uh, has not worked uh, properly, so to say. On the other hand, there is a growing public anger at the, uh, um, at the U.S. in Afghanistan. How do you think it is going to unfold in the future? Well, I think that the, um, the problem here depends very much on General Petraeus. I mean, he is now on the horns of a dilemma. Um, you know, we, it's true that status quo, the counterinsurgency plus nation-building approach, simply hasn't worked. And there's no evidence to think that it will work, certainly in time for next July, the expected beginning of the pullout in Afghan. So there's a reframing going on in D.C. right now where they're trying, General Petraeus is trying to set stakers, stakes in the ground saying that he might extend the time. It's quite clear after his Meet the Press interview this past Sunday in the United States that that's clearly a, a possibility, and in fact, I would say a probability, but he has to do a hat trick if he's going to pull it off because the population support both in Afghanistan and in the U.S. for this war has completely eroded. It's a very unpopular war contrary to some of the information operations or propaganda that we're seeing. And so I think that you're right that we're, we're really seeing a, a very delicate dance being done and the future unfolding of, of this is quite unclear at the present time. Right. And one final question. What would you say is uh, Washington's... Uh ideal political military as well as economic condition in Afghanistan the day its troops uh, leave the country? Well, you know, there are two elements of your question that are important. Number one, ideal versus real. The problem is that there is not going to be an ideal solution. We have to be realistic. And now, as I've said, what was a fairly firm date for beginning the withdrawal has been reframed just in the recent weeks and months to a v much more tentative date where the military uh, commitment to Afghanistan may contend, uh, continue much longer than, than thought. And so the ideal that's realistically possible is a stable Afghanistan that respects human rights and the rule of law. But to do that, I believe that we need to see creative diplomacy bringing in the regional powers in an interest-based post-American framework 
network linking to their internal contingents, the Taliban and otherwise, and there's no evidence that that's happening. Many thanks, Mr. Chip Pitts, President of Bill of Rights Defense Committee in Dallas, Texas.